Hi, I'm your host, Ron Knight. And I'm John Williams III, co-host of the show. Join us for the Entertainment First podcast every week. It's all about the music and more. Hey, hey, hey. That's right. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah? What do you mean, oh, yeah? But it's right. It's right What's, to start our show now. It's right to start? Oh, yeah. I, I thought it was left to start. It's right to start. It's right to start. Yeah. Oh, Everything's okay. on the right for me. It's all right? Yeah. Welcome, <laughs> <laughs> welcome back to the Entertainment First Podcast, where it's all about the music and more. And today, ladies and gentlemen, we have the one and only Curtis Knight on this program today. That's right. One of those AKA guys. He's an AKA guy. Also known as Nighttime. Now he doesn't know this, but we had we have arguments sometimes about it. Not arguments, but we have disagreements because you know he really inherited that name from me. He won't admit it, but I know. I know he did. I know he did. Why are you shaking your head, man? Yeah, he, 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 he's trying yeah, to see you what like, you're doing. You act like you're agreeing with him. Well, he's trying yeah, to see yeah, what yeah. you're doing. He wants to take your project and run. Oh, yeah. <laughs> take, take my project and run. Yeah. yeah, okay. Ladies and gentlemen, the one and only. That's right, bringing him to the desk. On Entertainment First Podcast, like I said once again, the one and only Curtis Knight from 123 Swimming Lessons. What's up, mean? Kurt? How we doing? Uh, I'm all right, man. Yeah, how about you? Can't complain. Could Can't be complain. Worse. Could be worse right now. Could be worse. Oh. How worse do you think it can get? <laughs> how worse do you? How worse October you? hasn't started yet. October, October hasn't started. started. Yeah, right. I, you, yeah, but that's about Halloween, man. <laughs> that's about Halloween. Anything mm -hmm. can happen in Halloween. Anybody out there going to uh, have, do trick or treating this year? I don't know. A lot of people are, don't want to do trick or treating. Oh, oh a lot around my neighborhood because no, I scare that. Kids, they they come up to me I, I around think he, March or April. I think April you almost said week. something like, else. Yeah, <laughs> they yeah, say, they say I that. scare them. They they come up to me around March or April and say, "Is your brother coming back tonight?" Because the way I dress, I said, "No, he's up in uh, Alaska, but he'll be here." What's he doing in Alaska? Oh, he's playing in volcanoes. He's like volcano. That's why he looks the way he loves on Halloween. And they ask me all the time around March, April, "Is he coming? We want to see him. We want that candy." I say, "He'll be here." <laughs> <laughs> so Halloween, so you, so you reckon that you, you reckon, you hear me? I'm, I'm yeah, doing some Australian saying, stuff. Yeah, it's some reckoning. Right, I'm reckoning now. Can you believe that I'm reckoning? But anyway, <laughs> but anyway, so you think it could get worse, huh? Then what's going on right now? Yeah, then what's going on right now? You know, right now. I mean, we won't get political or anything yeah, like that. But I just, yeah, I, we don't want to go that deep anyway. <laughs> So right now, let's just talk about one, two, three swimming. Yes. <laughs> it can get a whole lot better. Yeah. That's it's right. Getting better and better. So tell me, um, I know you deal with a lot of little babies and little kids, and, yeah. and um, you're teaching them to have some water skills. Yeah. So tell us about that. Um, well, starting from basically when I graduated as first job, you had me go into the paper and we were looking for lifeguard jobs, but um, went to a place and they asked me to, if I could swim instruct, and I said, well, of course. Mm -hmm. And then from basically from then on, um, it really became like a second nature thing for me because in Australia, always swimming. Yeah, so tell them about your, your experience in Australia and some of the things that you did down in Australia as a uh, surf lifesaver. Yeah, um, well, pretty much all the way up to we, when we moved, when I was 12, so all the way up, probably from 5 to about 11, we, a lot of us do a lot of um, search, basically search and rescue training um, as young children. So it's one of those things where you grow up in Australia, you, you have to learn how to swim. So coming over here, um, it's just all pools and things like that. So it's, it's a cakewalk for me as far as the pool is concerned. Um, but I didn't realize that a lot of people didn't know how to swim. Um, so being 17, teaching a whole lot of kids how to swim, um, turned, it in, turned into a whole lot of teenagers, and then it turned into adults. Um, even at 17, 18 years old, a lot of adults wanted my help to teach them how to swim. 
So I had started um, with a company first, and uh, actually my wife and I ran a swim school in Sacramento where Mike went to school. Um, ran the same swim school that was here and in Sacramento, um, but then of course 2008 happened, so we all had to shrink, um, and that's kind of when we went over to Australia, so we went back over to Australia. Um, in before that time, though, um, my son, when my son was probably about one or two, um, I started blogging online, um, and back then it was all about Google AdSense. So it was one of those things where we just wanted to build a website to get traffic for, for money on Google ads and things like that. So I built it to where um, swimming lessons was the key, key thing that I wanted everybody to see come to my website to learn about swim lessons. So I started blogging as a swim instructor's point of view. Um, and then basically from there until now, I've just become the guru in Las Vegas as far as um, a swim instructor. Um, mind you, the online stuff helps because I do a lot of parody videos, so I do rap videos, but I change them into teaching kids how to swim, so I change all the words and everything, do everything myself as far as um, the marketing behind everything, and kind of got a lot of people's attention. So now I'm just that that guru of, of so instructor. so what's your what's your your ages? I mean, what, I know that it's from from babies all the way up, but what's the the most age group that, that actually comes to you? Uh, probably very year to year, but I, I mean, average probably you're looking at around babies to seven years old. Right. Um, it's it's hard to say because. Really and honestly, I've taught a lot of adults and you know, a lot of teenagers. And, um, it's more of a confidence building thing anyway. So it's, it's not, pretty much everybody knows eventually how to swim. They just got to be shown the confidence in the water and buoyancy and things like that. So as far as kids, I'm really just a confidence builder is what I normally say. I just help the kids learn how to float on top of water. And John, what did you want to ask? Yeah, I was going to say, uh, you know, you're saying babies. To, uh, how, tell us how that is. I mean, they, that is a good question. Yeah, no, um, because I get that a lot. As far as babies, babies are not going to learn how to swim straight out. Um, you do see a lot of videos where they have those, that technique where they just flip over and, and float and things like that. I don't teach that technique. Um, mine is more about setting the groundwork for them to be able to swim and save themselves and do it all themselves. If they fall into a pool, turning over and floating for two hours is not going to save you. So I'm more of, they need to learn how to swim. So keep themselves above water, treading water, climbing out of the pool, right. all those types of things. So starting with the babies, it's more or less learning to hold their breath, um, learning the, the skill of turning back around to the wall, um, if they fall into the pool and things like that. But I will say, babies are not going to learn how to swim until, you're not going to have a kid learn probably to swim, swim until they're about one and a half, two. Yeah, because I'm saying, I would say my baby, wow, a baby is trying to yeah, get freestyle, not learning, <laughs> really learning. Right. You know, because, you know, you're under one or one and a half, you're still yep. trying to figure out how to walk. Even. <laughs> yep, no, but you'd be surprised. There's kids that'll swim before they walk. Yeah. So wow. it's one of those things where it, every kid, every kid is different. I can't. Um, most, pretty much, I haven't. I, there's n not been one kid I haven't taught how to swim. So there, I'm literally at 100. percent I never have been got a kid out of the pool and they didn't have something. That's really good. Yeah. So, it, but that again, I'll put that all on just me. It's more of a confidence building thing than showing them how to do it. So getting there. Getting their trust is the, the hardest part of anybody, anybody, even adults. Now, you also are an instructor instructor at um, uh, Lifetime uh, Fitness, aren't you? Yeah. And uh, so what do you actually do there? Water fitness. So water fitness. Mainly water fitness, yeah. Hydro training, um, water TRX, so circuit, circuit water classes. Um, I stayed niche into the water because all right, well, this is going to make me a little bit different. Um, and I really can swim better than most people. So it was one of those things I just really stayed in that 
I still do instruct a lot of fitness classes that are outside of the water, but mainly water fitness classes. Yeah. Yeah, that must have been a big change from Australia water to pools. Oh yeah, <laughs> oh yeah. But it's ocean water. Ocean water. Water is water. Water is water to me. Like I, that's one of those things where I'm always, the water is, is peaceful to me. I don't. Does I? I've been dumped, kept under water for minutes. Everything is. Water well, is I can actually remember you, swimming in twelve foot, waves, when I when I actually took you to the Central Coast to compete against about maybe 50 other other um, surf life oh, saving. Out there one time when only three of us came out? Yeah, where only three of you guys come out. I know I couldn't do it. I know I wouldn't have been able to do it. Um, actually, Kimberly was the other day that, that you actually swam through that. Summer. And I thought it was a tidal wave. I honestly, I, as a matter of fact, I couldn't see you in the water. And the next thing I know, I see these waves, these huge waves, and you three little guys, man, Powering through these waves, I couldn't believe it. I just couldn't believe it. So, but they, I, I gotta, I gotta let everybody know too. I actually took you when you were about six weeks old and threw you into the ocean. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I, I, I actually threw. I'll you be honest in. though, mom was yeah. a swimmer. Mom, yeah, she was. Yeah. Mom, he swimmer. She was yeah. the last one. My mom is a phenomenal swimmer. She yeah. swims still now. Um, we used to ride on her back all the time. Better than I, I can. She's she's one of those that just yeah. She's been able to yeah. She used that. used to ride on her back all the time. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and um, but I can just remember the uh, competitions that you guys had. Uh, you know, it, it, one thing about Australia, you're right. You got to learn how to swim in Australia. Yeah, well you got. It's a huge island, yeah. and I can tell you, I did not swim. Well, I I did swim, but. My swimming got better yeah. in Australia. Yeah, I remember. I have to remember that. I have mm -hmm. to. I have to say that. Now, let me ask you something. Where do you where do you see yourself going forward? One, two, three swimming lessons. Um, so, plan is really and honestly. Um, so, I, I I teach nonstop. It's still going now. Um, my main thing. I have an e guide. Um, I teach parents how to teach their kid how to swim. So, I actually sell an online guide that's broken up into video, audio lesson plan, everything all in one um, that they can just download and they can learn how to teach their child how to swim. Um, my main goal is really to start going around to um, swim schools and just teach grips to the parents, um, start with the babies, toddlers, whatever, um, and just teach them in huge groups. Um, the hands-on is always going to be there, but I always do want to get to as many many parents and as many kids as possible. Yeah, I was going to say, and not calling back to a little bit on what we were talking about, but uh, I would really like to see him with me, uh, go swimming with me, because I already got invited to go to Galapagos Island and get out of the right. and be in the water with the great whites. And Blue, uh, she's, yes. a, she's yeah. a 21 footer. She goes swim by you and let you pet her. Yeah, yeah um, I, I love everything else. I love it. Yeah, so Galapagos Island, I mean, uh, it's real good uh, with mm -hmm. Shark Week to go. Oh, yeah. I, w I, I was saying to myself, I wonder if he's going to swim back to the cage or stay out there. No, with me. let me let me tell you a little bit of uh, you know a little bit of things that I know about him as as a kid. I mean, he is my son, but I can tell you this: he not only has that background, but he also has a fisherman's background because he was brought up in a fisherman's community. So he used to go out with all the fishermen. He used to always come and beg me and say, "Man, can I go out on the? Can I go out on the trawler? Can I go out on the trawler?" And they would go out on the trawlers, man. And those trawlers, I can tell you right now, man, there's nothing that follows them but sharks. Oh yeah. <laughs> you know, so uh, you know that's not me, you know, boosting him up. I'm just saying what his background is, you know. And uh, we see, I I brought my kids up on the beach, so that's why they're it's easy for. As a matter of fact, I didn't know my daughter even swam as well as she did. And I saw her in where was that? Uh, I think it was at the Greek in a, in Greek islands. Oh uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. When she went. Yeah, when she went to Greece, and I was. They took a photo of her inside this cave, where the water was so blue, and it just was, it was just her in the water. And it's a wonderful picture, and I had no idea that she swam like that. I really had no idea. But like I said, they grew up on the beach, so it's, it makes it a lot easier if you're growing up on the beach. Well, I can imagine. I mean, 
me being from San Francisco. Yeah, that's right. You know, I mean, our water's cold, so <laughs> we went to the, you know, the parks and swam there. Right. But, you know, a lot of people went to the beach to swim. Now, let me ask you something. Um, with your um, with your lessons that you have, uh, that you are doing now, mm -hmm. so how many how many um, times out of the year do you get adults doing your your uh, swimming lessons? On average, how how what do you mean? Like as far as how many how many adults? Yeah, but how many year? adults would you have in a, in a class? Oh no no no, because I'm because I'm mainly private. <laughs> See, like, okay, so to explain really how I do it, I don't do group unless right. it's fitness. Okay. So fitness, I can do group. Right. Um, when it comes to teaching kids how to swim, they need, or, or adults for that matter, mm -hmm. they need to have the one-on-one -on -one time. <clears throat> so whether that be with their parent or with me, um, it's more one-on-one. -on -one. I don't take any more than two. Right. Um, so they, there's private and semi-private. Um, and basically in five, five lessons, they're going to learn. So I've, al I've always done my, basically the package is how they are, but the most, the most um, popular one is the five lessons, and basically in five lessons, you're definitely going to see whether you're going to swim or not. Well, that's great, because, you know, i got to look at the camera on this. Don, that's my roommate, Don, you are going to learn how to swim. <laughs> she, <was gonna> learn. <laughs> she does not know how to swim. She doesn't know how to no, swim. She does not know. We've got to a trainer. <laughs> very, very important. Very, very important. Um, my last question to you would be, let me ask you something. Do you think that you will ever return to the place where you really learned how to s swim? Uh, tough one at the moment. Uh, do I ever think I'll return? Of course. Yeah. Um, to stay, I don't know. Yeah, right. Um, it's one of those things where this, this is kind of, it's this snowball effect is kind of happening now where it, um, I've done everything you know, long enough mm -hmm. where we were just talking about working and working and working and working really for nothing. Right. And then now it's gotten to the point where it's yeah. a whole lot of something. So. That's the way it normally happens though. Yeah. Yeah, it normally happens that way what? because you prepared for it. See, any, and you probably not working, I mean, in, wor in, in better words, you're probably not working for nothing. You're working to be prepared to be prepared for the opportunity when it comes to you. Yeah, I will rephrase that. I didn't work for nothing because it wasn't work. Right. It was all fun, and the videos that I do is is too fun. Like I, the kids that I work with at the middle school, they all want to redo a whole new video, and I got to drop more of them than one or two of them now. So it's one of those things where um, I've caught my little groove and I'm on my track and staying right there. John, so, so you do in and on video or? Everything. So starting with first in the summer, maybe I'll redo a whole song, like a parody song, redo the whole song. Right. Um, Drake, whoever, whoever the rapper is that's hot right now, redo it. Then from there, I video everything in the water. Any, anybody that I have, all of my clients video them in the water so they have something to look for because I've been showing a lot of the kids the, the videos of themselves and it just shoots them forward a whole lot. Now, during, no yeah, matter how I, I during this time period, has it been really tough because people not want to go out or? No, for me, <laughs> surprisingly, as soon as it hit, my phone didn't, it hasn't stopped. Wow. Yeah, it's. That's great. Well, the benefit of it for me was uh, it's only me and you know whoever works with me. It's only us, so we go privately. So we don't have they don't come to us. We don't have a facility. We go to them. It's up to them. So as far as any of the the COVID or anything like that didn't affect. Yeah, plus know. the people at home too. So that was yeah, the, that's the that's right. the thing that probably would have worked for them rather than not. You know, right. it's sort of like what we're doing in the studio right here right now. You know. Hollywood is shut down. Yeah. So we're right here at the Hollywood. This is Hollywood right here. Okay? And if it ain't now, it will be later. I can tell you that. <laughs> okay? Uh, ladies and gentlemen, you are listening to the Entertainment First podcast where it's all about the music and more. We'll be right back with the one and only Curtis Knight.
Okay, we're back with Entertainment First, where it's all about the music and more. We're here with the one and only Curtis Knight from 123 Swimming Lessons. Man, I can't believe it. I can't be I can't believe it. 123 Swimming Lessons dot com. Did not know that part. <laughs> <laughs> you say you didn't know. But anyway, listen. Uh, it's called Young Timers. Yeah, say no, <laughs> young not timers. old timers, but no, young, young timers. That's the way it begins. Uh, <laughs> um, you also do something in the uh, music industry, don't you, Kurt? Well, I've, yeah, I've moved everything over to swimming. But yes, after you, Pops, definitely never shy away from the music scene. And so tell us about a couple of the things that you produced. Actually, I know you produced a couple of records, too, as well. And I've seen some of your videos online. Yeah. Um, well, before, when, we're in, when I was in Australia, uh, so definitely over, probably over five, six years now, um, was working with a lot of DJs that would come from the States over to Australia. Um, I was emceeing and just traveling around Australia, um, doing different shows, things like that. Um, then we'd get with a lot of DJs and do a lot of split mixes so that's kind of where um, the swimming parodies came from mm -hmm. we kind of the DJs that knew what we could do with copyrights we would take certain songs that weren't that hot or were good to us but hot in a little little community redo them and call them split, split mixes so we did do a lot of and then of course I did a lot of my own stuff but um, Mainly, we would do that so that we could play in the clubs and people would know what we were playing, um, just with my own lyrics over the top of it or whatnot. Um, so, as far as entertainment, yeah, been doing entertainment since. <laughs> yeah, I can remember what you did to me one night. I was on stage and this guy runs up and snatches the microphone from me when he was about three years old. Man, somebody like, give me the mic, give me the mic, and, and my manager said to me, "Give him the mic, give him the mic, man." This guy got up and sang Johnny Be Good. Wow. <laughs> saying Johnny Be Good. Um, you recently had a, an incident with you with uh, some social media. Tell us about that. Uh, yeah, so <laughs> you gotta, in a nutshell, I don't, I'm definitely not gonna say you gotta watch what you say. Because um, I'm not gonna, I guess I'm not gonna stop really. Yeah, you, got, you do have to, you, yeah, you do. What you I know what you mean. mean, I know you was gonna say, I'm not going to say it, but you can say it because it is what it is. Well, I, d I don't want to say it for myself because I'm right. not going to stop saying what I want to say. Right. Maybe I've spoken about it, but yeah, probably only was Saturday night. Saturday night, uh, 10 years worth of content dumped down the memory hole. They didn't tell me why. This is on Instagram, by the way. Um, didn't tell me why. Still haven't told me why. Um, so I'm, I'm chalking it up as being a pretty vocal individual, and I think a lot of people didn't like it. So they decided to report me, and I guess Instagram decided to take my whole account yeah, well, it's not, off the platform. Trust me, it's, I don't feel like the Lone Ranger because it's happening to a lot of people right now. Oh, yeah. But then again, I, uh, a story that you might want to uh, know, it's just a little historical story. <clears throat> there was only two guys that really originally invented the the uh, internet there were two professors one of them was I wouldn't say a, a yin and a yang or a good and a bad but they only used it at one time for military and then they, it came to the point where one of the guys because the government had actually come in and said we really don't want this to be used. And the other guy said, well, you know, the people should have this. Well, they, the other guy didn't know that the other guy would go, and I won't mention any names, but the other guy didn't really realize that the Internet in the beginning was owned by the United States government. The reason was is because they funded it but they didn't know that they had control. One thing led to another, and then the government became embedded into the public part of it. Because uh, my brother was in the United States Air Force in 1950-something. He worked in 
Frankfurt, Germany for the United States Air Force. So they were using that stuff for intelligence and stuff like that. But that's why nowadays it's a different it's a different kettle of fish, mm -hmm. you know. So uh, whatever you want to make out of that, don't feel like the Lone Ranger because it's happening to a lot of people. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, I want to thank Curtis Knight for being on this program. Hopefully, we'll have these two young men back. Of course, with Mike Philogene, and uh, we will hopefully have you guys back in the future and watching your progress as well. In the meantime, you have been listening to the Entertainment First podcast, where it's all about the music and more. You can reach us at entertainmentfirst.com anytime you want to have a conversation. I want to thank my co-host, Mr. John E. Williams, the one and only, um, I think he's a gangster from either New York or Chicago. Hey, 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 Las Vegas, okay? Love huh? You know, my Las family Vegas. used to run the city a long time ago. Oh, I can't be talking about that. In now. the meantime, <laughs> don't be no fool and be cool. This is the Entertainment First podcast, but it's all about the music and more. Yeah, dive off a cliff. Man, I'm from Australia, man.